Hello, everybody. Welcome to the National Parents Union Nightly Restorative Check-In. I am Marisol Quevedo de Rucha. I am the mother of Camerina, Emilia, and Sofia. I'm the daughter of Irma Navran. I am the very proud grandmother also of Isabella Luna and Cynthia Eliana. And I am the proud granddaughter of uh, Camerina, Alejandro, Francisco, and Carmen. So thank you for allowing me to bring my family into the conversation today. Uh, as I've shared before, I believe that I don't speak just with my voice, but I speak with uh, their voice. I um, believe that I am the result of their hopes and their dreams and their prayers, just as my grandchildren and future generations, future ancestors will be the result of mine. So it's um, with a lot of respect and love that I thank you for allowing me that time, that moment to introduce myself in that way. And I'm from San Diego, California. So we start our show with the four, seven, eight breathing technique. And what this technique is, so those of you that have been with us already know, it's, it's an opportunity to really relax um, and to center ourselves, ground ourselves, and just be fully present in a calm, loving way for the conversation that we have in this, in this hour. Uh, so the four, seven, eight technique, we breathe in for four seconds, we hold for seven, and then we release for eight. And we do this four times. So I will do the count. I have uh, set up on my computer right here in front of me uh, a, a stopwatch so that I can do the countdown for us. And if I make an error, please forgive me. Um, but I, I do that to help with the pacing and that way you can just focus on your breathing. And what I um, ask you to do is to sit in a comfortable position. I always prefer to have my feet planted firmly in the ground. Even though I'm not on the earth, I know I feel that there is a connection by having my foot firmly on the ground. And then you can just put your hands gently on your lap if you'd like to either lower your gaze, lower your eyes or close your eyes and breathe out, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, release, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <sighs> Thank you for joining me in that breathing technique. Uh, it was taught to me by Dr. Anjoli Lafori, and Anjoli hosts our show on Fridays. So she had one of her dear, dear friends, um, who I just said his name, Entree, Entree Hampon, and I didn't get a, a chance to catch the show yet. I saw um, just a, a snippet, and I saw he looked absolutely wonderful with his bow tie on. But Jada, who is our producer, thank you, Jada, for all that you do. Uh, sh she let me know that it was a really great show, and it was really beautiful being able to see their relationship, but also to hear about, uh, to hear what he had to share. And he's an endocrinologist. So I know that they talked about COVID. So I'm excited to, to go back and listen to that video. So I wanted to share a couple of reminders for you. First, if you would like to learn more about becoming a member of the National Parents Union, please go to our website. We now have our applications up. It's a very simple application process. The application for individuals or for organizations is available on the website.
the other thing is that we have our campaign every family votes so i'm not sure if this is on the website but there we have an amazing kit um, for communities that really want to work on getting out the vote for this election and it has a step-by-step -step process along with a suggested uh, plan like a calendar not with the dates but that you can fill in it's a great resource so make sure that you check the website for that and lastly we have a grant opportunity that I believe is closing on the 15th and it is for families so it can be you do not have to be a 501c3 or a business so it could be individual families um, or organizations who are who are going to be creating school pods and so if that is something I've gotten um, gotten a lot of questions about it uh, but if it's something that you're interested in and it's something that you're doing this could be an opportunity to get some funding and it's five thousand to twenty five thousand dollars you can apply for so the inf that information is also on the website also on the website which i think is something really helpful especially these times and seeing a lot of posts on facebook with people uh like not knowing yet what's going on with their schools, if their kids, if the schools want them to go back or if they're gonna do something blended or if it's fully online. And if you, you know, just want some, I think wording I would say around like ways to talk or things to maybe even demand for your kids, if they're going back, go to the Parents Union website and look at the Bill of Rights. So find that document, it has really great information. So I just wanted to make those announcements and a reminder, I will be with you on Wednesday and then Friday will be Dr. Anjali's show again. So with that, I would like to welcome our guest, Atia Slaughter. So let's have her come on. Let me see. I don't know what happened, but I can't hear you. I can see. I got I got muted. I think it oh, was me flip, flipping back and forth. Okay, there you are. Hi. So, hi. Happy Happy Monday. Thank you. Thank you. So we had you on the show before, but we have different people who listen. So if you could do us a favor, because I said nothing mm -hmm. about you. <laughs> <laughs> if you could just do a, an introduction, anything that you would like to share about yourself, about your family, about your work, about your being, about uh, your passions, whatever you would like to share with us. Sure. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you for that breathing. That really, it's, it's been a Monday. So just taking a minute to center myself was extremely helpful. Um, I am a Southern California girl. You and I... Uh, I met you many years ago. We've been friends for a long time, and I am currently walking through a um, parenthood journey that has been a long time coming. The last time I was on the show, I was actually technically on um, maternity leave from my sh my job right in the m beginning of the pandemic, while welcoming our son into our house, um, and he, I. Actually, he was eight at that time, and now um, he's since had a birthday, so he's nine, um, through the foster care system. Um, there was so much confusion when I first, uh, w when I was on your show last, just because the pandemic was in its early stages, and we didn't know how long it was going to, well, we still don't know how long everything's going to last, but it, there wasn't a normal yet. Um, and we just found out, I think we just found out that his court date was pushed. So he's still technically in foster care. And our first uh, court date is now in January. So he probably won't be adopted until uh, mid uh, 2021, which is fine. I mean, he's here, he's in our house, he's in our hearts. Um, and honestly, I think the last, um, <laughs> the last time I was on your show, I made it through, you know, just kind of our conversation and our interacting uh, without probably the world knowing that it was probably the hardest time in my life. I mean, it was, a, there was a lot happening all at once um, without, you know, honestly, I, I'm a little bit of a control freak. I've organized my life in a way that I make things predictable. So nothing was predictable. So it was just, it was tough. Um, but like everything else in life, I, I think we're, my entire family is better for that experience. Um, we definitely forged a relationship that is, um, I don't think it would have 
happen in that amount of time had we not had all of the crazy circumstances. I think, you know, if, if I remember correctly, things actually got a lot worse after you were on the show. Probably. Like there, there were some, there were some, there were some difficult days. I, I mean, there, there have been a lot of difficult days, but I don't remember where the show yeah. fell. <laughs> I don't remember either. I just, I just remember being like, ooh, because one yeah. of our, one of our parents, our delegates, um, Maritza Guridi is, um, I believe that she's a foster parent or she's had a lot of experience in the system. And I just remember, I remember her, like she was commenting on that and I remember at some point after that wanting to reach out but you know what it was right before you got connected with uh, the county connected you with that other parent oh okay okay yeah I mean it was uh, so you know parenthood I, I can't I can't speak to traditional parenthood outside of and what I mean by that is you know when you birth your child and your family mm -hmm. you make decisions to have mm -hmm. a family um, outside of what I've experienced from witnessing um, this, our son is our only child and we fully intend on adopting um, his siblings or his future siblings. He doesn't have any biological siblings, but, um, but I think that I can say parenthood is not easy. And then when you take a route that um, invites uh, systems into your house, uh, namely foster care, it doesn't um, it doesn't make it any easier. Um, there are so many choices. So our son is also medically fragile. Uh, he has type one diabetes. Um, so there are so many things that you know, if we had legal rights, that we would do a little bit differently. But we have a lot of input on what should and shouldn't be. Um, my son has two different social work. Well, I'm sorry, that's a lie. He has three different social workers. Um, he has, you know, a therapist and a behavioral, uh, behavioralist, and he has a psychiatrist and he has, uh, because he's, um, diabetic, he has an endocrinologist and he just has all of these adult experts who all bring their own gifts, but it really makes the situation a little more complicated sometimes. Well, and I think also because just who you are, like you are somebody that is, that is very private and that... <laughs> And like you said, like handles, handles are stuff. So having so many people involved in the decision making mm -hmm. and then involved like it, and questioning. And then also you, you're very private in the sense also, like you have people up in your house. Yes, I don't like that. And, and in your house though also in this time of COVID. And I know that that protective part of you because like you're keeping your house a very safe place for him. Medically, yeah. not just emotionally, those things, of course, but because of his, uh, his diagnosis, his, his, his diabetes, like you're being very careful. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I really attribute my uh, level of privacy because it, it's not secrecy, but, you right, know, no. you're out in the world and you give so much of your energy away that there are things that have to be sacred. And so our house is like a place that what happens in our house stays in our house, not in, an, not in that unhealthy way right. that we were trained for, trained for generations, but like, it's just a place to kind of go and recharge. So to have other people bring their energy into the house that you haven't invited in, or you mm -hmm. wouldn't normally choose to have in, it's, it's difficult for me. And I, and I do attribute the way that I feel about my house to my Southern grandmother who definitely <laughs> was all about, you know, well, I mean, for a variety of reasons, but just like all about making sure you keep your energy a certain way in your home. But then on top of that, um, dealing with what happens when you invite systems of control into your house, it generally does not work out well for us. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so it's tough. And then on top of that, I had a, my mom, unfortunately is deceased, but she had a, um, she had lupus. And so she had a compromised immune system. So from that, I was I taught how to be very conscious of germs and stuff like that. So yeah, so dealing with my kids um, health situation, I am very protective. Um, and I don't want extra people in the house, especially I, you know, especially people that are visiting other homes. Yeah. Um, because it just puts him in, it. I mean, it puts us all, but specifically him in a situation that's not, I don't, it's not great. It's 
so but they have um in that way they have respected us and they do meet like in in the backyard which we're blessed to have so yeah how how have things gone now that you've gone back to work oh because you've been back to work two or three weeks i've been back to work i'm going on my fourth week and um it's tough it's really tough on a, in a lot of ways um you know before having a child i could give almost everything i had to work and that is the type of i work in entertainment and there is a um maybe an unspoken expectation that you know you you give it all um so i i could do that i i could do that more freely but my kid well really but part of that giving it all is also how you move up yes it is it's, it's, it's just, getting the experience. It's getting that, that like it's, and it's being known, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think in, in your industry, if you're known and you get connected and you're known for doing good work, then yeah. that helps you. It's true. It's true. Um, so I just getting back, you know, my colleagues, I'm, I'm really blessed to have an amazing group of people that have supported me through this whole journey, but my colleagues have been used to, um, spending eight hours on zoom calls and kind mm -hmm. of, uh, blending all of the work and work life and personal life and kind of navigating it. I am exhausted. I am like, <laughs> I'm a bit overwhelmed. I don't know what's happening. Actually today uh, was the first day that I felt like I kind of had a concept of what I should be doing um, because it, you know, we're not going into work for safety purposes. And then COVID-19 has put a layer of um, kind of things that we have to do and understand and manage. Um, that I just haven't dug into. So it's just, it's been a, it's been overwhelming. Um, it's also been interesting to watch how I react to it because um, the part of me that wants to prove my value through my work has to figure out another way to be valuable. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful because it's going to hopefully help me build um, my self-esteem outside of that other things mm -hmm. but it's also frightening because it's like if I can't do all of this then I'm no good kind of weird conversation that I have going mm -hmm. on in my head so it's been interesting and that's such a big one you know I so what I want you to know is that parents are having a hard time right now anyway just period because of all of the changes and it's so amazing that this is when you became like you become a parent with not with an infant, but with a school age child. Yeah. And so that entire navigation, so now you're back at work and now you've moved from going to your building every day okay. to working from home um, where your child is and where your husband mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And so that's just like that, that word overwhelm. How are you dealing with it? How are you working through it? Um. I mean, I call you and cry quite often. Let's be honest. <laughs> I think I just called you probably, it was probably Wednesday, calling you crying, not even knowing what to do. Um, there's this uh, organization called Girl Trek, um, and it's this organization of African American women who mm -hmm. are trying to um, kind of infuse health, mental and physical health, um, back into who we are as, and so they have these, they just started a walk again, but they have, they, they had during COVID, they had this walk, um, black history walk 30 minutes every day. You dial in while you're outside walking, reclaiming the streets. And that has been helpful. Just walking and listening and learning and different community. community. It's a way of having community. Cause right mm -hmm. now that's, that's a little different. Also, um, I mean, I eat a lot. That helps. <laughs> I mean, I treat, I treat myself to different things. Um, I've, uh, well, I'm going to tell you everything from here up has not changed at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but like I, I do. So uh, I have a history of working through depression, um, major depression. Um, and so I have just kind of some signifiers that help me realize like when I'm on a, like a downward uh, slope. And so I have to take the time to say, um, for me, it's, I need to make sure that I'm sleeping well, which is tough 
Cause that's like the first, my anxiety, that's the first thing that goes, I start to deal with insomnia, but I have to make sure I'm sleeping well, that I get outside for at least 15 minutes a day between 11 and three to get some vitamin D, that I drink water, that I have well-balanced meals, which isn't, that part's not difficult because I'm very conscious of how I feed my kid. Um, and that I just have to remove myself. Sometimes I have to have my own time, even if I feel like slightly upset that my husband is dealing with some major breakdown or trauma or whatever, or tantrum rather, but I have to have a moment. So one of the things I've been doing actually, um, based on a conversation you and I had, I think of the conversation when I was crying, um, you said, I think you're going to feel better when your office is put together. And um, we are blessed enough to have a house where I can, uh, where I'm converting one room into an office. And so this weekend, even though I had a ton of work to do, I um, painted because that was like the first step and I could feel myself feeling lighter from that. Um, and then t tonight I'll get in there and organize and then I'll have my space that I can close my door and kind of, um, you know, just recharge. That's the other thing. I'm talking a lot right now, but I'm actually like an introvert who <laughs> puts out a lot of energy and then I need to go and like really yeah. plug in my battery. So, yeah. And, and what's interesting though, is that like the, th this time, this time of quarantine or this time, it's not the same mm -hmm. as being able to go into like your, your space to recharge and re mm -hmm. it is, it's not the same because yeah. there's almost no, especially with everything that, that you've taken on during that time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so whichever way it is that you can, I think also that the act of painting, the physical movement, and then having it done. So how is your office looking? I mean, I have to still do some touch up, but, uh, but it's pretty much done and I love it. And you, you hit on something really important. You know, when you watch those, um, they, they, I think they call them randomly satisfying videos where it's like some, some kind of gushy yes. something. Yes. Something about the paint and the way it feels and moving mm -hmm. your body, like it the was- sound. It was, yes, it was so therapeutic. Like it was, it was such a, I, I was telling my husband, I was you like, have your whole house painted. <laughs> we are, I was like, forget it, we're gonna, I mean, and then like into hour three, I was like, okay. <laughs> um, if he could, if he could like uh, tape everything up and set it up and then I just come in and do the painting, we'll be fine. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was satisfying, definitely. Well, and the the one thing I wanted to so I'm gonna I'm gonna shift over a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to to talk about is is our is our relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, because what you're saying, you know, what you're saying is true. Like this really hard times. Like we, the the way I think both of us put it is that there is no me in this world without you. And we've known each other since we were 12 years old. Yeah. So I'm going to, I don't know if I've ever had you say like our, our, our origin story. Would you like to share our origin story? Yeah. But first I'll say, I, I know that we haven't known each other that long since we met when we were 12 and I'm only 25, but. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, but that's still more than half of our lives yeah, in that no, context. No, no. <laughs> obviously, obviously much older than 25, but, um, I, well, so I was 12 and I was your babysitter. I was your mom's <laughs> babysitter. <laughs> Ma, Ma, Madi and I have this, it doesn't make sense. To we have this joke. Um, Cause I don't care about how old I am. She doesn't care how old she is. <laughs> I would like at this point in my life to stop revealing that. Um, Madi is a little bit older than me, like literally two months older than me. But I've made a situation where her kids for our, their entire lives <laughs> thought I, that she was like much older. And, but anyway, um, but yeah, so we met when we were 12. We, had, we have a mutual friend who um, my mother, she and my, our mutual friend's mother and my mother were best friends. Um, so she, she and Madi went to school together, um, middle school, right? We met, it was, it was the summer between elementary school and middle school. Okay. We met at a summer program. Yeah. 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 So going into middle school. Going into middle school. So I, my family, my mother moved around a lot. Um, so I was born in San Diego, but moved between San Diego and New Jersey back and forth my entire child childhood. So when I think when you 
and our mutual friend met. I think at that point I was still in. Um, it was the summer you came back. You oh, came back oh like at the around this time. It was around July, August that you came back. That's funny. You guys are so close. I thought you'd already been friends much longer. But um, but that's how we met initially, and then we ended up going to high school together for just a little bit. And um, our freshman year of high school, we were thick, like we were two peas in a pod. You couldn't separate us. Um, I, was, I just have to talk about your boyfriend. <laughs> your, one boyfriend. of your boyfriends, the one who had. Uh, we're gonna name him. Uh, yeah, no, I know who you talk about. The, the oh. one who's all the brothers yes. have the same. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that he was actually kind of my first boyfriend. He, I didn't know he was my boyfriend until. I was gonna say, didn't he claim you? Yeah, we had a conversation. I thought we were just friends, and we had a conversation one day, and he was like, "You're my girlfriend," and I was very young and very awkward. Because we were like fourteen. I yeah, I was fourteen, and I had um, really like crooked teeth, so I was a kid that was always like hiding and never wanting attention. And the fact that this guy said that, I was like, "Great, I'm." I'm, I have, uh, someone likes me, basically. He um, had multiple siblings. I think there were seven of them and they all had the same first name. And so you would say their name and you would say- What you number? Know, so-and-so one, so-and-so two, or to, to, so you knew who the difference in-, in So the, this was one. He was, yes, I dated, <laughs> let's say Johnny one. Yes, I, I dated Johnny one uh, for a short period of time. He had a, a cute little car and I was really fancy. But we were awkward ninth, ninth graders. Like we were, I, I, in retrospect, it's like we were sweet kids, but we were so mm -hmm. awkward. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's how we met. And then 10th grade, we separated. And I went, my, uh, we moved back to New Jersey. And then I came back to California um, for my freshman year in college. And, um, and then we- And were, that's when we I had like moved out of some of my own awkwardness and my like because i we both had i had messed up teeth but we had i was i've always been heavy like i had a lot we had mutual self-esteem <laughs> issues <that I> think <laughs> us. um but it was when you came back that and it was it, you know i think it was about a year and a half after you came back when i had camerina when i had my first yeah. baby yeah. And I will say when I came back, I was like, oh, she is a hot mama. I remember the red <laughs> lipstick, the hair, the tight clothes. I was like, wow. Um, well, because yeah. ninth grade year, I wore a poncho the entire year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, we were very awkward. <laughs> very awkward. Very awkward. But still somehow cool. You know what I mean? Like still. I was cool by association. Like, like <laughs> But still like great great taste in music, great taste yeah. in literature, but just like, yeah. yeah, our parents were both activists. Um, yeah. so, you know, your mom was, had been, um, had run Chicano Federation forever. Mm -hmm. Um, my mom was an activist in the black community. So we were, and she worked that, at San Diego state, that amazing yeah. program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were kids that had exposure to like, what life was supposed to be about but we were just kind of figuring it out for ourselves really actually now that i'm having this conversation that would be such a cute show um the other thing that was interesting is you couldn't tell me actually Madi was the one that told me like i didn't even know that there were um situations where black and brown folks weren't supposed to be super close because that's i didn't i didn't know any difference so it was it, it would be interesting to see kind of how you know people would respond to our interaction um but it's always been you know i mean people say it now a lot but like my fight has always been her fight and her fight's always been mine like our struggles are the same and we've it and we've always approached things that way so yeah i think that um we always we always connected mm -hmm. and even you know in some of that in between time you know like I would go over to your house because it was close to my dad's yeah. when I would stay over there. But it was really when we went to college together and I had my first daughter yeah. that we like, there was a whole different level. And I think that our relationship became a whole different level amongst different level of relationships okay. because really, you know, and <clears throat> I don't think I told this story on the show, but, um, 
So I had my first daughter, and then <laughs> when she was six months old, I got pregnant with my second daughter, who is your goddaughter. Mm -hmm. um, and when she was a couple months old, I transferred to San Diego State. She, what we realize now, probably had colic. <laughs> um, but she was a, she cried a lot. She spit up a lot. Like it was just very, she, she was, it took, a, she needed to be held close all the time in, in the holding clothes, she would spit up on you and throw up on you. And when I was going to school, you would babysit her. And here you were, so we were 21 years old mm -hmm. and you were like living the life and just like, and then, but, but then you would watch my kids. Yeah. And you had a shirt that you only wore to babysit when you came over. Cause I had, I think it was two night classes that you came to watch her that it was like your spit up shirt because she had ruined all of your clothes. And then you would go and have this fabulous life of like dating people and, and you know, going out. And I was, you know, going to school with my kids. Um, but that, that time and that partnership, because pretty early on their biological dad, like we knew was not. Um, yeah. So you became my partner in raising my kids. Yeah. And it was, I, I remember a couple things when, because I was at San Diego State, and you would go and you would pick them up for me. Um, and I remember one time they, one of the caregivers had called me, and they were like, "Hey, come, like come here, come here," and and they said that they read a book, and um, I think it one of the, I think it was a media like so she was a little bit older at this point, and they were like, she pointed to the dad, and they were like, "What is that?" Like like. And she was, she just was, and you know, she wasn't very verbal. She was just kind of like, I don't know what that is. But around that time also, you came to pick up the girls and Camerina, my older daughter, went running. I always remember the image. I, even though I wasn't there, she yeah. came running to you. And I can almost hear her little feet hitting the, mm -hmm. um, hitting the metal of, yeah. of the portable, <laughs> running down. And she yelled at you. Papa Tia, Papa Tia. Yeah, yeah. And my kids chose you as their papa. Yeah. So they somehow knew that they had a mom, and somehow they figured they also had a dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it had to be you. <laughs> because you were the one that was there. Um, yeah, those are my babies. Um, yeah, it was interesting because... Um, Amelia, I remember before you had her and I remember having a dream about what she was going to look like and how different she was going to be from your older, from Mina. Um, but yeah, those are my babies. And in retrospect, it's kind of interesting because um, I was so wild that it is incredible that you um, chose me and allowed me to love them because those are the relate. I'm going to cry. Sorry. But those are the relationships that have um, that help form who I am now, um, and help me kind of figure out certain priorities in life. And it was definitely a blessing. And they're still my big babies. I mean, um, they're grown women there's, with their own lives, but they're, they're still brats. My babies. Yeah, <laughs> they're it's still brats. my babies. Um, yeah. But yeah, like they were. I mean, I. It, I mean. At, at the time I lived in Baja, you used to let me bring them to <laughs> across the border. Which is Mexico. <laughs> right, yeah, right, across the border. In, you lived in Mexico. Um, and now it's kind of like, like a crazy thing to think that some um, African or African American woman had two very pale children that she used to drive <laughs> back and cross, back and forth across the border. But, um, but yeah, they were, they were, they were amazing. And I remember the day that Mina started calling me Papatia. And I remember actually on some level, like being a little mortified initially, because I was like, oh no, no, I don't, you know, no, we're, we're, we're best friends. We're not in a relationship. And then I had to like say, well, why does it, why is that, what's triggering? Who cares? And then, and so, and that was my nickname for years. I mean, she actually came to stay with me a couple months ago and start and tried to explain the story to my son who was like, I don't I don't get it. But, um, but she still, you know, she still referenced that because that was my nickname for, for years. Yeah. She still refers to you as, as Papa Tia. Yeah. Just, yeah. She still refers to you that way. Yeah. Because that, um, that's who you are. And I think in, 
every way. And we've talked about this a lot, but you know, you were working at least two jobs. You were on your own since you were 18. I stayed at home with my two kids to go to school, but you were, I think you were working two or three jobs and you bought them their Easter dresses. That was such an accomplishment for me. Like it still is one of those things that was like, um, gosh, why am I so weepy tonight? But it was like, um, saving to be able to do it and then like pick out what picking out what I thought was the most beautiful and then using my discount at the store and like just um, being able to contribute in some way was really important to me. Well and the thing Sorry. is like well I'm over here crying too but the thing is to you like I didn't have yeah. like I like there were things that I didn't like I didn't have and you were the like you became that partner that was helping me figure things out you know and i like i remember you and i would go um a couple times and like figure out what jewelry we could go hawk <laughs> because the girls needed shoes or they needed something or diapers but it, or, and we needed gas in our car but it was always like a it was a partnership mm -hmm. it was a partnership that i didn't have and i think the the blessings again to have that relationship with with somebody with another woman um but even if it, but just to have that relationship with somebody who chooses your kids yeah you know because you didn't have you didn't have to do any of that just like my husband right who who wound up adopting them but he's not their biological father but to have somebody choose them yeah. and choose me to be in it with uh, I don't want us to cry. Also, for you to trust your husband and to trust me, like you've always, like you've never ever said, "Well, those are my." Like if I say what my opinion or what I'd like to do, you've never said, "Well, those are my kids," and so no. Like you've you've always been like, "Those are your kids. Go for it." Like, and that is takes a level of like generosity and trust that I don't know that anyone else else has ever had in me in terms of our relationship um and it's interesting too because um we had a situation the other day we're in a we're all in a group text Maddie's kids and, <laughs> and Maddie are in a group text of course because um and so the other day they were texting these uh tiktoks where the parents were pretending to be injured <laughs> the kids are saying that the um that they're going to get a ticket a, a speeding ticket otherwise they're very cute tiktoks um although I'm sure it stressed the parents out. And so I was like, yeah, isn't your mom amazing? She'd totally do that for you. And they were like, she would never do that for me. It's cheap. They would, she would be like, it's your fault. You got a ticket, da, 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 da. And I was like, that's actually true. I was like, but she would do it for me. <laughs> so we did laugh because we do have a relationship that is, that is, it's seen like, okay, this is the truth of it. It's seen up and down, ups and downs, right? There have been times that we haven't been the happiest with one another. I mean, it's been years. I don't think we've had any of those situations in a long time, but through like a level of, um, I don't know, some conflict and, but mostly just like life challenges and changes and joys, like w our bond is so strong. Like my biological family understands how close we are and that you are my sister. Like it's, 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 it, it's very clear to everyone in our lives. I remember when I was still dating my husband and he met you and he was like, oh, I totally get it. Like <laughs> every one of your friends says that when we're together, every single one of them, when they, when they meet me, because you've moved around yeah. and I've stayed here. And yeah. so when we, you meet somebody, that's the thing that always sticks with me. Cause they're always, they'll look at us at some point and be like, oh, I understand. And we're both <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I appreciate having that relationship. I also know that um, not everyone has that. And so people have made comments to me about that too. Like, oh, I don't have friends like um, th that are the, you know, that's close or whatever. Like, um, I mean, I really do think you know everything about me. And it, 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 I mean, it's been over time. Nothing happened immediately. You've been able to witness a lot of it. So it's not even things that I've, I've had to tell you. but. Um, but I do think that you know more about me probably than anyone else in this world, including my husband that I sleep next to every night who knows a lot about me, but um, it's just, it's a history, it's time. I think what you said is really important about the relationship 
And I think that that, that our relationship has helped me in talking with other people about relationships because the, the, there's the history, yes, there's the bond, but there's also the choice to continue to be committed yeah. to each other. And even in, because in any relationship, so people see romantic relationships a little bit differently. Um, and I think they hang on a lot, like, you know, much more in romantic relationships than in like unhealthy romantic relationships and unhealthy friendships. Um, but, but there was a commitment that we made. And I think that the girls, I think that that experience that we shared with them and we were so young, yeah. Yeah. we were, we were 19, 20, 21, like yeah. from the time Camerina, you know, I was pregnant with Camerina to having Emilia. Um, and so I think that bond, but, but it's not just them because if it was just them, then I would still have some kind of a relationship with their biological father, right? Like he, he would know them, they would know. But it's, I think, us continuing to, even through the difficulties and the challenges, to continue to want to grow together. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, we have been vulnerable with one another since the beginning in various ways, mm -hmm. like being awkward 14 year old girls, not knowing really mm -hmm. much about social, certain social aspects, um, maybe having an opinion on what's going on in different parts of the world, but not really knowing much about outside of our romance books about um, dating or anything like that. Um, <laughs> to, you know, just a lot of, you know, my mother, <clears throat> I've unfortunately experienced a lot of loss, death, my mother passing, my grandmother passing, my mm -hmm. brother passing, you know, through all Your of granddaddy. Those, my granddaddy, mm -hmm. through all of those experiences. Um, I've been blessed enough to be a part of your family where no one passes away, which is great, knock on wood. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> just so, like the elders, the elders have passed. Yes. You know, the elders, yeah. stormy, stormy past, but yeah. the elders. Yeah. So it's, it's been all of those things. And I think that, um, I think we also understand the value of our friendship. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no one else that can be as frank with me as you are without me being like, a, like what? You can't tell me that, you know, I mean, I do love a level of honesty from everyone. This is different. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a really important, it's important to have people that you can depend on and that you can trust and that you can love and that you can be your 100% authentic self with. Um, and I don't take it for granted at all. Um, the pandemic has been hard uh, for us because we normally see each other more often than we have. Um, but, you know, modern technology we facetime each other <laughs> often um, which is a saving grace it is a yes. saving grace Let me yes. i think the reason why we're both still happily married is because we have each other oh i agree i agree i really agree i i, I think if my husband really understood that aspect of our life he would agree too because he, i'd be getting uh, flowers <laughs> <laughs> yeah he doesn't he doesn't have to hear half of the stuff because i've already <laughs> processed it with you but mm -hmm. not in a unhealthy way right because no. we still have our very individual relationships with our significant others that that's different um but but i will say like we we had a conversation week before last where you called me because your husband said we talk every day and and i had to say no that's not true like they still even though they understand how connected we are to them and that we respect our relationships with them and we are intimate with them and in in a lot of ways as well they really get that we charge each other up like the amount of time the amount you and i talk on the phone people would think that i like to talk on the phone and we're both the same neither of us really talk on the phone but no. we will talk to one another because we have to um check in and we have to like process little things um I, so it's the like the processing of and it's the sharing and it's mm -hmm. the um, and I think also like the perspectives that, that we share with one another, because being able to talk to you as a beautiful black woman helps me in my work. Yeah. And it helps me understand, uh, like from the beginning in education, 
and um and and your perspective on things it just also helps me as a human being so and it wasn't that long ago so this was pre-covid so i'm going to say maybe last year when we were crossing the street and i was going to jaywalk and you grabbed me and you were like nope like you with your lights go ahead and it's a different type of understanding and because pers- i only have my perspective right Right. And I think that that also has helped us understand the world yeah. in, in, a, in a deeper way because our, our cultural backgrounds are different. Yeah. Yeah. Our cultural backgrounds are different and then your skin is different, yeah. right? Like yeah. uh, I was telling Maddie one of the things that um, I forgot that I forget that people don't call you that. I'm sorry. Um, but one of the things that was heartbreaking, that's my family name. That's my family name. (laughs) (laughs) Um, when our son first came to us and we had gone to, uh, we were trying to find like a storage bin because he was going to be in school and he had, he needed his snacks because of the diabetes. Um, so we couldn't find a storage bin anywhere. So we went into like a 99 cent store. because I was like, maybe they'll have like a little plastic thing. And I didn't see anything there that I liked. So on our way out, he announces to the store, we didn't buy anything. We didn't want anything. We don't have anything in our pockets. And I was like, what are you doing? And it reminded me that part of the way that I have learned to be in stores and retail spaces Mm -hmm. has been watching you, like the boldness that I have to pick up things, put it down, walk around, whatever. I didn't, I, I had the same messages that my son had, um, has, has experienced already. And he's only nine, um, where it's like, you know, show your hands always, you don't, you know, like there's all, there's, we, there's an automatic assumption about who you are and what your motives are. Right. When you have a certain color skin, um, in this country specifically and, but being with you and watching you and how, I mean, you'll darn near put something in your pocket and take it out. Like you just don't have like that kind of, and it's like, you know what I, that I haven't been, afforded that but i also haven't taken advantage of it in like in a way like i haven't Mm -hmm. i've had messages given to me i know what my experiences have been i understand what people's perspective Mm -hmm. are but i also need to live boldly and need to be Mm -hmm. me and when my son said that it almost broke my heart and i was like listen here you're allowed to be in a store you're allowed to touch everything Mm -hmm. you want you're don't you dare i mean obviously i have to teach him to be um smart and conscious and cautious because of who he is but I also don't want him to live in a a prison you know a certain prison that I feel like uh I I I experienced a lot in my youth and long story short a lot of that has been just watching the way that you allow yourself to be in the world and it's very admirable and so I try to adapt some adopt some of those things well I think that's the the other pieces there's um not only the depth of the understanding that we have for each other um, and then like that leading to the depth of love, but we also, we do nothing but support each other and speak words of love Mm -hmm. to each other, even in, (laughs) even in the hard times, Mm -hmm. like it's always been from a place of love. And that has helped me so much in the way that I relate to other people. And in the way that I share and I connect with, with others, because, um, because that's the way that we are. And I think part of my learning was that I didn't understand really how unique our relationship was. Mm -hmm. And, and so I thought that other really, and not that I I wanted the same relationship, but it's just, it's just very different. Um, but I think that that piece has helped me connect with other people. It's, it's helped me like remind me to act from love and, and the importance of building each other up. Yeah. And also the importance of having some, like picking the people around you. Cause both, both of us have our own communities yeah. of our, of, of our friends. <laughs> um, but, but they're all people that I would say that there's definitely, I bet you if we were to put them, there are some things about them that are similar. Yeah. They're all very strong, very smart, very loving, <laughs> you know, very compassionate yeah. um, and, and, and compassionate, not just, you know, towards self and to others, but about the world yes. and about community. Um, 
and and I think that that being able to build those other relationships that I have that I love so much and I'm so grateful for, it comes back to having the experience that I have with you. It's foundation. Our our relationship is foundational. That's a very good way of putting it. I agree with that. Yeah. Because because we were babies. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we were babies. You know, when I introduce the the show, so I don't always talk about my siblings, but I always say, and my my siblings are I'm the sister of Alex, Atia, and Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. Those are my brothers. Those two people that you spoke of. Those are my yes. brothers as well. Yeah. One of them I've known his entire life, which is kind of scary. Yes. Yes. We're not going to talk about how old he is. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> my younger brother. I'll tell you on a different show. Tune in on Wednesday and I'll let you know exactly how old I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so how has what are the ways because I talk about your mom Mm -hmm. um and I always share like the the thing that that you that you shared with me that she shared was um you know that we become a part of each other's DNA Mm -hmm. what are the ways that you feel that you have been um that the imprint that you feel from, I would say my family. So not, not just me, but from that relationship, that connection. Well, it's interesting because, um, I think about your family often, obviously. Um, actually actually I have boxes over here that I need to send out that have various things for your various family members, but, um, your, um, each person in your family is so different in certain ways. So like, um, Yoli, for example, Yolanda, should I say Yolanda? I you can know. say Yoli. It's okay. My dear. I just uh, say hi to her. Cause she's the, she's the, I think she's the only one who watches. <laughs> hi Yoli. Um, but when I think about Yoli, like, and I think about obviously unconditional love and mm-hmm. her, um, devotion to, um, her religion, to Catholicism and to how that is expressed in a very loving way. Um, how in many, many different times in my life where I've said, oh, I don't know how this is going to work out or where I'm going to live, but I know I can go stay with Yoli. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's like this, sometimes to me, um, in my, my personal experience, people have used, and in, in my life, no offense to anyone, but some have used religion and not, you know, in kind of a controlling mm-hmm. way the way that Yoli expresses her love of God is the same way that my grandfather did. And it's just Mm -hmm. very pure and it is for everyone. And um, that's really amazing. Like watching Yoli with Stormy and with you and when we were younger and uh, Risa and with everyone, like just, she's just full of love and with your kids and with uh, your kids, kids. And so there's like this undeniable kind of, um, warmth and that's I that that's an imprint that won't ever go anywhere and it's something that I uh, there are ways in my life that I model like I try to model that um, because everyone should feel like they have a warm place to go and a, mm-hmm. a meal and love and um, guidance if you ask you know um, and her consistency with certain things I really appreciate too um, and then your mom is very, very powerful and very smart. Um, and just, and when I say powerful, I just mean like the way that her brain works um, and the way that she processes things, the way she understands the world, it's very unique. Um, but she doesn't, I, I didn't, I've never had to work with her. So I don't know what, like she's like in a work setting, but like, if you're sitting there talking to her, she's going to talk to you about anything. Like you, you, you don't even necessarily know the the genius that you're talking to you know what I mean like she's just like a regular woman with beautiful jewelry and who's just amazing and powerful and I wonder like I wonder with even with my mom and my grandmother but I wonder like what the world was like for her like how to have this itty bitty petite brown woman who's Mm -hmm. gorgeous and super intelligent and like likes things that aren't um like your mom 
yeah, aren't no mm -hmm. normal or regular. Mm -hmm. Like how did she navigate and how did mm -hmm. she learn to be so confident and to still mm -hmm. be herself, even though the world pushes against that. So those in that way, you know, um, and then randomly, uh, your older brother, uh, used to skateboard when we were younger and he probably still does a little bit. I don't know, but he used to skateboard when we were younger. And that was like such a thing for me. At one point I wanted to be a skateboarder because of him. So it's like such a strange, I don't even think I've ever even had this conversation with him, but just that experience of like trying to learn about skateboarding and how to, cause I liked to skateboard when I was younger. So he kind of reintroduced me to it, obviously didn't go anywhere, but, um, but he just was so cool. Like it was like a cool, he was a skateboarder. He had long hair. He listened to different music. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he, there was something that made me want to like, out cool him <laughs> mm -hmm. which wasn't possible when we were kids um but like well, and for, that was makana for me like yeah. my, your older bro, he, who's brother who's four years older yeah yeah but so yeah. are like the artsy with the older yeah. friends Super artsy. and just mm -hmm. so and i mean he's still super cool he like he doesn't know how i nerd out when he texts me or he'll be like, hey, listen to this music. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, that's uh, mm -hmm. it's funny. Um, but yeah, each one of your family members, like even your stepmom, your dad, like there, I, I, we don't even have time to get into it, but each person has uh, taught me or shown me something different about who they are and about how to work in the world and against who the world says you're, you're supposed to be. And it's been very significant and um and and always so welcoming like when i go to your mom's house or at anyone's house like it doesn't matter like i'm a part of the family i don't feel mm -hmm. any sort of separation uh the only the only time recently i thought a separation was when uh Maddie was having family portraits and i was like oh i can't make that day and she's like these are not for you <laughs> That was a couple years ago. The ones <laughs> at the got a Park. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I can't make it down that day. And you're like, you're not invited. <laughs> but that's the only time in many, many years. I'm uh, sorry. I apologize. No, no, no. <laughs> um, well, Ca Cameron wasn't in those either. So oh, yeah, he's, all, he's always around the world. But um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been a, it's been amazing. I hope that I didn't bore your audience. I think what is so, so, so just in, in that question and the way that you phrase it, I just think about if we just all as human beings allowed ourselves to be loved mm -hmm. and to connect in that way and to, and, and, you know, not everybody has the same family structure, the same, but just like to really be able to brave, um, to brave the discomfort, to brave vulnerability, to brave like trusting, because it takes a lot of trust, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, just the way that we impact each other, mm -hmm. okay. the opportunity to impact and grow together. Because even if we would have met, you know, as adults, I think we still absolutely would have been close and would have bonded. But, but then you think about like as adults, right? Like your kids wind up being together mm -hmm. your kids like they're still I think that we have a very unique friendship and it's a blessing it is one of my greatest blessings mm -hmm. is our friendship mine too but I don't think that it's something that other people can't have and I don't think that it's just so it's great that we had our like that we were young together but it really has been as adults and committing to com uh, continuing to commit to each other yeah I agree has, has been what makes the difference and, and like I said, like, there is no me in this world without you. I There's no, I would, I, I would not be me. I wouldn't be me either. And I hope that everyone has opportunity to have a relationship that helps energize them and helps them grow. Yeah. And um, just like, sometimes I feel bad for all the stuff I put on you, but like, I, excuse me you helped me raise my children <laughs> but like I you know it's part like it's so it's so important to have someone that I can just say this is this is it like take mm -hmm. off my bra and just be like mm -hmm. I 
I need to rest and can you just mm -hmm. hold my hand for a minute? Like, or can you see what I don't see in this situation? Cause I'm so deep in it. Like, can you help me navigate? And it's a blessing. I do, I do want that for everyone. Me too. Me too. That'll be my, one of my prayers tonight. I love you. Our time is up. You. All right. Thank, Thank you. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Good night, everybody. I'll see you on Wednesday night. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being here for the conversation. Look, she just left. Um, um, but thank you so much. And I will see you on Wednesday. And don't forget, uh, Dr. Anjali will be with you on Friday. Good night.